Hey guys, so it's been a little while and I apologize for that, but I have been working on a video that uh, it's a tough nugget to crack. So I don't want it to be too bad, but those little white rings everybody talks about, there's a whole Reddit thread dedicated to it where someone recommended polish the edges. We'll get into that. Uh, but what we're gonna talk about today is those freaking white rings you see around glasses. What are they? Where do they come from? How do you get rid of it? Oh, well, don't get cheap glasses. Um, yeah. mm, I shouldn't say that. Nice. Let's dive into it. Yeah, it's gonna be a day. I'm sorry. Hang on tight, it's worth the ride, I promise. Especially you myopic prescriptions, this is your worst nightmare because it is one of the things every pair of glasses you have probably has, or if it doesn't, well, you're lucky. Anyway, so you'll notice on my glasses, I don't have a white frosted edge anywhere. Now, I mentioned some people say this is a polished edge, some people, well, I, I don't know what everybody else says anyways. The biggest thing I see is people say, ask for a polished edge on your lenses to prevent that frosted edge. Now, while that's true to some degree, it comes down more to the placement of the actual bevel within the frame. Where that's located is gonna determine how much whiteness you pick around the rim. That in combination with what we call a safety bevel, which keeps the back edge of these lenses from being razor sharp, or in the case of a plus prescription, the front edge, because you don't wanna just be cleaning your glasses and slice your finger open. I've done that before playing with these, so. Yeah, in fact, I had a nice little scar here for a while from that, and you can't quite make it out on camera, but it's still there, I promise. So you don't want that in your glasses that you're actually wearing every day, or goodness forbid you fell with them on and it sliced you open right here or right here. I've seen that before too on occasion. But what it amounts to is on that safety bevel, as I mentioned, is gonna determine how much of a white edge you have on the lenses. Now I've taken this lens and I'll show you kind of what we did with it here, but I have gone very, very heavy on the safety bevel here. You'll see that is almost rounded off, more like you would see a roll and polish edge on a high minus. And then right around, you know, that's still a little heavy, a little heavy there. There we go. So here's the light kiss right here. Just barely took that sharp edge off. If you don't really know what you're looking for, you won't even see that it's missing. And you'll notice on this part, we don't really have that strong white edge around it. And I even took it a step further. This edge is frosted and finished, and this edge is polished. Both of these have that same lightly kissed safety bit. <laughs> light kiss of a safety bevel. It does get a little heavier right in here, so pay attention more in this area here is what we're talking about. And you'll see there is not much, let me put it against my dark shirt there so you can really see, there is not much of a difference in where that frosting starts just based on that. So it comes down more to, there we go. Turn that the right way, there you go. So you can see right in here, we're still at frosted edge and you can see it a little bit. I probably went heavier myself than that, but then here is kind of that polished edge with that really light bevel. And then we turn over here, kind of the same thing. I've gone a little heavy on that safety bevel. Where is it here? Yeah, right through here. And we've got the same situation. I've gone and frosted this edge and then we're nice and polished over here. And you'll take that and you see, as soon as I put my hand against it, you can tell it doesn't make a damn bit of difference whether it's this frosted or the polished. And in fact, the polished, you'll notice is worse because you're actually reflecting that safety bevel through the lens further. So you can see here's our frosted edge that isn't picking up as much light into the lens. We call those myopic rings and they are not your friend if you're wearing these. So that's kind of the quick and dirty of this part of it, that safety bevel. And the reason you see that and the reason I mentioned on cheaper glasses is because it's more automated. When you're running these high volumes at razor thin margins to make a pair of glasses for like 10, 20 bucks, you don't care. Whatever that machine spits out over there is what you're sending out the door. 
That's what it comes down to. And they want to run it as fast as they possibly can. The less time it's in the lab, the less people that are touching it, the faster it gets out the door, the more it saves them and the more they can not charge you. But the end result is definitely a compromised look. Is it worth it for 10, 20, 30 bucks? Sure, but if you're paying five, $600 and it looks like this, <sighs> yeah, that's all I have to say about that. Now, it can happen sometimes, and obviously, as I mentioned with the high minus prescriptions, you do need to have that safety bevel on there so it feels good, but there is a balance. As you can see on here, I don't think I left any part of this completely untouched. I did give it just a light kiss all the way around. Right in here, it disappears entirely a little bit, and that does show, you know, but when you get a lens this thick, and this one, I wanna say it's about five, six diopters-ish, so you can bury most of that in the frame pretty easily on a good acetate frame. Once it's actually cut down, we'd be five, six millimeters in here. A lot of frames are five, six millimeters. You can work that out where there's not a lot of exposed edge, but you still need that safety bevel because there will be one corner that that sucker is there and you will <laughs> do what I've done and have a nice little scar on your thumb from just trying to wear and clean your glasses. Now, next, I did mention it comes down to the bevel placement in the frame as well. That's another trick and it takes a little bit more finesse. You can run that little guy on auto. It's gonna pick a pretty decent bevel for most things, particularly high minus, at least mine. It does a pretty good job on those. I can set a couple buttons, a little tiny bit of manipulation and it's still gonna churn out a pretty damn good result, but that comes from hours of calibrating it. Hours, days, hours for days calibrating. I think we spent actually three days, about six to eight hours a day, and a custom program tune from the manufacturer to get that safety bell the way it is. Now my sizing is all over the map and I spent hours getting the sizing right. Pick your battles I choose. And apparently I chose the safety bevel one in consistent sizing. Anyways, can get that sorted out later. That's not what we're talking about. But my point is that high production labs are not gonna turn out that kind of work. It's just, you know, they're gonna run it and it's gonna be whatever the machine spits out. And most machines with an auto safety bevel are gonna spit out A, an inconsistent bevel that's not gonna have the axis exactly aligned because they're not going in and recalibrating it every chance they possibly have and keeping it running like a fine tuned machine. Even a Ferrari takes a little extra finesse to keep it running correctly. And yes, I will say that some labs do. Very, very few labs do. I know a couple that do, and <laughs> yeah, they spend a lot of time working on those things, but they're addicts like me, so it's what you get. As far as the bevel, I mentioned with these minus lenses, you have a lot more room to play with it. If it's sat too far forward, you'll get that little triangle bevel is gonna be partially cut off, and then you get kind of the same thing going on. So if you think about the safety bevel and you think about the triangle point of the bevel that actually sits and holds the lens within the frame, well, if you sit that far forward and you cut and truncate part of that front edge, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have almost the safety bevel type thing going on, right? Because you're gonna have more of the cut on the back versus the front. So say your front edge is gonna start here, your back edge is gonna start here. There are cases you have to do that. We call it a step bevel when it is intentionally done. We call it a shitty bevel when it is done on accident. <laughs> I should not be doing this today. Uh, but I said I would do this, so we're doing this. Now, when it's a step bevel and it's needed is gonna be those high wrap frames, like the really sporty sunglasses. In that case, you're gonna have a dark front lens more often than not. You're just not gonna see it. It's not a huge deal. If we need to in those cases, you can go in, you can paint the bevel, you can do the same thing on these high minus jobs and make it look a little bit cleaner. What happens though is the same thing you have here as we turn, yeah. So you pick up kind of the difference here in the polish, it's starting to get greasy from my fingerprints and the frosted edge here, and you can see when the light hits that, you've got these rings that start to appear. If you paint the edge, it's the same thing. You're gonna see this no matter what, that's just a factor of the optics and the lens. So if you paint it, it's still gonna be black rings or blue rings or whatever color you paint it, which is fine if you're going for that. And that's not to say it's a bad thing. We do it here occasionally as well. So that's just, 
the nature of the physics with the lens. Now the plus prescriptions are a little bit different. I don't even have one of those handy, but they tend to be more razor thin out here at the edges and thicker in the center. So then you're gonna have the opposite. The, the white heaviness is gonna be here and here, and it's gonna be really thin and disappear here and here. The reason we notice it more on minus lenses is because they are thicker out here, and that's right at the edge of the face, so you tend to be looking there anyway, and as they move, again, you get this little bit of a light shift there. You have more light coming through the back of the lens in a minus lens, just by the nature of the way it bends light, so you have wider areas here. It's, it's all a balancing act, and that's why there are so many different ways to do this. Now, obviously, for what I'm saying, that could be totally wrong for some people. They don't want that safety bevel as thin as they can get it. They want it as safe as they can damn get it. And, uh, well, I guess that has its use too. Personally, my store is more fashion and cosmetic oriented, so obviously we care about the overall looks of what we're turning out. I still care about optics. Don't take that the wrong way. If you've been on this channel long enough, you know I absolutely care about optics. But we make compromises, right? You find the balance between what you want, what works, and what looks good. That's the magic. That's why I love this field so much, because there's so many different ways to get to the same end result, and that same end result may not be the same for everybody. That's what makes it fun. Every pair is different, every person is different, every pair for every person is different. Yeah, and that's what I've got. I don't even have a pair of glasses in my hands that has one of those big, thick, white rings around the rim. I intended to get one, I intended to have one to bring, and that was fun. I'm gonna go clean that up. I told you I shouldn't be doing this today. I will catch you guys next time. We'll have more fun then. In the meantime, let me know your thoughts on this. If you've ever had a pair of glasses like I'm talking about and wondered what was going on, why, how, or if it was bad or okay, let me know. I'll catch you next time.